My name is Harriet Earhart. I began my career in Stonewall Jackson School, and my first teaching was at Preston Hollow Elementary School. My doctorate is as a master teacher. I was principal at Arlington Park the year we initiated the desegregation order. I served your board and had five very successful children who all graduated from Woodrow Wilson High School. I voted against this charter amendment to the education code as a state legislator in 95, and I believe it is equally as bad as I thought it was then. I'm speaking on behalf of a newly formed coalition, our community, our schools. We are an ethnically, geographically diverse organization of parents, community members, educators, activists, leaders, civic organizations, and faith-based groups committed to make our schools the very best that they can be. We are vehemently opposed to Dallas ISD becoming a home rule charter district. Would, now, if you all take my 10 minutes up. That's right. Would you all who are a member of the coalition please stand? Our purpose today, thank you, thank you all. Our purpose today is to voice our concern as well as our expectations around the Home Rule Charter push to take over our neighborhood public schools. As someone who was in the legislature at the time this law was passed in 95, I can counter what uh, my friend Mr. Valdez said. Uh, this, this Home Rule Charter was in no means brought to the legislature to improve the schools, but to escape from the obligation to comply with important safeguards of educational quality in state law. The Home Rule Charter served to appease those legislators who wanted private school vouchers to subsidize unregulated private education with taxpayer funds. They did not have the votes to get what they really wanted, so they had to settle for home rule option as their best choice to dismantle public schools quality safeguards that they deemed to be burdensome. Fortunate for Texas until now, the home rule option under the state law has gone unused. In light of the troubling but enlightening research by Brett Chip at Channel 8, we believe you should take a deep breath and consider what is being uncovered daily about how the petitions were gathered. Are they really, are they really reflective of the 24,647 so-called verified signatures? It took more than 48,000 petition lines to get the required number. About half of those that were presented were wrong. How many of the so-called verified were also wrong and ill-gotten? Given the concerns expressed by many and many of the community who said they were misled into signing the petition regarding the dubious tactics used by petition gatherers, I just love that they love this. <laughs> <clears throat> Is, is, not, is it not your obligation, board, is it not your obligation to verify all aspects of the process rather than leave it up to industrious investigative research media or a very concerned group who will most certainly be checking the accuracy? The manner in which these signatures were gathered only reinforces the citizens' concern about the secretive nature of the group behind the petitions which this day has failed to disclose the funding sources. The one that has been disclosed, billionaire and former Enron executive John Arnold of Houston, does not inspire confidence as to the intentions of the SOX group. Mr. Arnold tipped his hand in a recent op-ed article lamenting the difficulty of the democratic process in achieving his preferred policy changes, particularly referring to the inconvenience of having to persuade elected local school boards 
to do what he wants. The legislation allowing for home rule charter district takeover has never been tried anywhere in our state. We are being used as a guinea pig to test this unproven initiative. We believe this untested so-called reform effort will derail real progress that our schools and our students have managed to make against very steep odds. Over the past few years, despite budget cuts, ill-advised school closures, and the loss of effective and experienced educators, Dallas ID has seen an increase in the four-year graduation rate, up 30%. It was almost as much as and I were making the same speech because we too are very proud of the 30% rise since nine, in 2007. We've seen a decline in the dropout rate for all groups and about 25%. We've made significant gains in efforts to close the achievement gap and we've seen improved test scores in both reading and math. DISD students and schools have made real headway and we have nationally recognized and state applauded schools. We've heard that you, as a board, called unproductive, squabbling body of not concerned about our students, even by one of your own. Well, you must have done something right. No one thinks our schools are where they need to be. I believe that all of us feel a sense of urgency to ensure that the children in DISD have the best educational opp opportunities. The advocates of home rule charter takeover of our neighborhood public schools would jeopardize provisions that provide caps on class sizes and would threaten to lower or remove standards that help preserve teacher quality and increase the unhealthy emphasis on testing. And to do so under the rules that our state code requires cookie cutter schools and restricts diversity and ties the district's hand to try innovative options. What are they thinking? Have they never set foot in Skyline or Townview or our exemplary neighborhood elementary and middle schools? Have they never attended any of our professional quality dance, theater, and musical performances? Have they not seen the award-winning art produced in our innovative settings? Do they not read the accolades our students get excelling in national academic compensation? Where is the restriction to what they refer? What's my time? I have two minutes? Thank you. <laughs> the truth is that home rule is, is required only for the sake of adults, whose agenda is to change district governments, not for the sake of the children. We urge this board and the entire DISD community to beware of a Trojan horse that is only phase one that ultimately would make DISD schools a target for those who look at our pupils and see dollar signs. We urge the body to move forward in a thoughtful, thorough, deliberate manner rather than being rushed by any group, particularly one not elected and appointed. You do not have any legal obligation to SOX you do have a legal and moral obligation to the students and stakeholders here. All budget implications must be chaired with complete transparency. This is gonna cost about $2 million. Think of what we could have done for our children for that. The false urgency of Sox declaration is purely selfish on their part. The November election is their choice, not ours. The process needs to be completely transparent based on research and grounded, and you, your committee needs to reflect all the wonderful diversity that our, that our schools have. Our schools are for the purpose of educating our children, not for the money available for other person, persons, and certainly not for the ideology of school privatization. Thank you. Thank you.